Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, the parable of the bad tenants, which is found in all of the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's not too long, but there's a lot of interesting details in it, so let's take a look. Hear ye another parable. There was a man, a householder, who planted a vineyard, and made a hedge round about it, and dug in it a press, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a strange country. Matthew 21.33 And he began to speak to them in parables. A certain man planted a vineyard, and made a hedge about it, and dug a place for the wine vat, and built a tower, and let it to husbandmen, and went into a far country. Mark 12.1 and he began to speak to the people in this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard, and let it out to husbandmen, and he was abroad for a long time. Luke 29 A husbandman basically means a farmer here. Anyway, while Luke doesn't go into all these details, the first two Gospels are clear that the founder of the vineyard did an awful lot of work, making it easy for people to grow grapes, the vineyard itself, protect them from thieves and wildlife, the hedge, see thieves coming from some distance away, the tower, and turn the grapes into wine, the press, everything a person would need to make a very comfortable living for themselves while still technically working for someone else who really owns the property. Jesus is explaining that God went over and above in providing for the people of Jerusalem something that they should have been grateful for. However, and when the time of the fruits drew nigh, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits thereof. And the husbandman, laying hands on his servants, beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Matthew 21, 34-35 And at the season he sent to the husbandman a servant to receive of the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard, who, having laid hands on him, beat him and sent him away empty. Mark 12, 2-3 And at the season he sent a servant to the husbandman, that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard who, beating him, sent him away empty. Luke 20, 10. At the season and time of the fruits seemed to imply the time when they were expected to give to the owner what they'd been assigned to, probably wine, since the press was specifically mentioned. His messenger goes to collect, but not only do the tenants refuse to do their jobs, but they actually physically abuse the messenger. This is a reference to the prophets who God sent to the people and how shamefully they were mistreated. Again, he sent other servants more than the former, and they did to them in like manner. Matthew 21.36 And again he sent to them another servant, and him they wounded in the head, and used him reproachfully. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, of whom some they beat, and others they killed. Mark 12.4-5 And again he sent another servant, but they beat him also, and treated him reproachfully, and sent him away empty. And again he sent the third, and they wounded him also and cast him out. Luke 20, 11-12 Similar to the last part, this refers to the mistreatment of the prophets by the people of Israel, and how over and over again they were beaten and killed by the people they'd come to help, just because they were unrelenting in doing what God had told them to. And last of all, he sent to them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. Matthew twenty one thirty seven. Therefore, having yet one son most dear to him, he also sent him unto them last of all, saying, They will reverence my son. Mark 12, 6 Then the Lord of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be when they see him, they will reverence him. Luke twenty thirteen. Of course, God knew exactly what would happen to Jesus when he sent him, but the human vineyard owner in the parable would have no way of knowing. He might think that maybe they didn't realize the messages were genuine, or perhaps they thought that the vineyard owner would eventually leave them alone. By sending his son, he sends a clear message that he's determined to have what they owe him, and also provides proof that it really is him demanding the wine. This action removes all ambiguity, and the next reply of the farmers will show their true intentions very clearly. But the husbandmen, seeing the son, said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and we shall have his inheritance. Matthew twenty-one thirty-eight. 
But the husbandmen said one to another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. Mark 12, 7 Whom, when the husbandmen saw, they thought within themselves, saying, This is the heir. Let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. Luke twenty fourteen. As beneficiaries of the vineyard owner, the evil farmers seem to believe that he owes them something, and that if only his son wasn't in the way, they'd end up getting more. This isn't too different from the way the Pharisees had Jesus killed, partly out of jealousy, and partly because they were worried the Romans might take their country away if they didn't do something to silence him. In a sense, therefore, Jesus is predicting his future death in this part of the parable. And taking him, they cast him forth out of the vineyard and killed him. When, therefore, the Lord of the vineyard shall come, what will he do to those husbandmen? Matthew twenty-one thirty-nine to 40 And laying hold on him, they killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. Mark twelve eight. So casting him out of the vineyard, they killed him. What, therefore, will the Lord of the vineyard do to them? Luke twenty fifteen. Refusing to pay your landlord carries, in most cases, only the penalty of eviction. The penalty for murdering your landlord's son, however, is much more severe. In the same way, Jesus explains that punishing the evil farmers severely for their crime is no more than they deserve. The people responsible for the death of Jesus and the prophets face an even worse fate. They say to him, He will bring those evil men to an evil end, and will let out his vineyard to other husbandmen that shall render him the fruit in due season. Jesus saith to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? By the Lord this has been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, that the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and shall be given to a nation yielding the fruits thereof. Matthew 21 41-43 41 to 43. What therefore will the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy those husbandmen, and will give the vineyard to others. And have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is made the head of the corner. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Mark 12, 9 to 11. He will come and will destroy these husbandmen, and will give the vineyard to others, which they hearing said to him, God forbid! Luke twenty sixteen. Jesus explains that the people of Jerusalem, and especially those in charge of it, will face justice for their crimes against him, and their inheritance will be given to others who are more worthy. This refers to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD by the Roman general Titus and his legions. Also, those Jews who converted to Christianity traveled all over the empire teaching about Jesus, so most of them weren't in Jerusalem during the siege and destruction. Ultimately, those early Christians would carry on a religion that would become the dominant religion of the Western world and whose teachings would open the door to incredible new opportunities for its adherents. Those who'd rejected God lost his protection, while those who followed God accomplished great things in the world, all in the hope of eternal life. Next, the weeds. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.